Before we begin, thank you very much to the magazine Captain Keys removes from his magnum before giving it to Master Chief. For joining the Patreon campaign. I've never gotten a donation from a magazine clip before. That's an interesting... Thank you. Thank you. I'm not familiar with Halo, because I've never owned an Xbox, so I don't get the reference, but thank you very much. Um, I would like to just officially let everybody know that I do have enough shoutouts in Patreon to make it to the end of the month, which means it will be 11 straight months of shoutouts, which is insane. And we're over the four-digit mark on Patreon, which is also insane. Thank you. It means, it means the world to me that you th so many people think that I deserve the support. I, and I will try to be deserving of the support. Oh, 2024 is going to be a busy year. You, you don't you have no idea what I'm working on. All right. It's News Roundup time once again. We're a day delayed, but I'm keeping to the rules. Um, if it was news on Tuesday this week, I'm not including it. It will be next week. We got plenty to talk about anyway, and that starts with a whole bunch of new listings, including another G.I. Joe crossover figure. This one is Optimus Prime as the motorized battle tank, or MOBAT, complete with a General Hawk figure. Now, I don't think there's much surprise to this. They can't make Optimus Prime, uh, they can't make him one of the big Cobra jets, and they, or uh, they can't make him one of the big G.I. Joe jets, and they have to make him a ground vehicle. And yeah, that's it's it's a tank. Like when you're talking G.I. Joe, the one you're going to go to is a tank. It's a little bit basic, but you know what? For the situation, it works. My only concern is, are they going to pull a Megatron? Because the tank is primarily green, and they're probably going to want to force red and blue into that robot. Mm. I'm very curious to see how they balance it. Because, like, we're, we're, we've got the Thunder Mayhem out now. Like, we the, the Thunder Machine. I'm sorry. Uh, we've got Soundwave out now. And Soundwave actually looks like he turned out pretty good. But he has the benefit of a blue robot coming from a blue vehicle. Uh, this one might harken back more to the first two, Bumblebee and Megatron, which has me concerned, but we'll see. As far as other listings go, so we have uh, Generation Studio Series Voyager 86 Blaster and Eject, a Target exclusive. Pr probably going to be a pretty blatant redo of Kingdom Blaster and uh, Eject, which does not surprise me in the least. Um, most like a lot of the Target exclusive uh, studio series figures most likely going to replace the translucent with opaque I really wish they would announce that kind of thing ahead of time because I absolutely would have bought that I would have waited for that instead and I now I've got my king now I got my kingdom blaster with a translucent tape I don't want it just leaves me wondering where when are we getting rewind when are we completing this uh, we also have a Amazon exclusive two pack called, just called Generations Mayhem Deluxe Two Pack. So all we know is that it's two deluxes, and who knows? Mayhem immediately makes me think Mayhem Attack Squad, the Decepticons' answer to the Wreckers. There's a few prominent members that don't have toys, including Ransack. Uh, I believe it's Ransack. Um, it's one of you know, it's. It's it's a it's one of the deluxe insecticons. Uh, I might be I might be wrong in the name. I could never keep their names straight outside a chop shop. But um, I we do know that we're gonna get all the deluxe insecticons eventually. So far we've only got one, which I think is actually Ransack, and I'm just mixing up names. But point being, it's an opportunity to get another one out, and who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's it it might be in the start of another capsule. They did wreckers, so why not do mayhem attack squad? Uh, we also have this new listing with a new item called Mix Mashers. Now, the first thought in your head is, of course, it just sounds like they're doing uh, sounds like they're like they're doing the old like hero masher figures again. The weird thing about the Mix Mashers is they are both basic and deluxe price points. And you would think that with toys being different sizes, that would make swapping parts between the two kind of impossible. So maybe it's not. Maybe it's some other kind of thing that they've come up with. Either way, it's the main four characters that are that are in the first waves that we know of. 
We'll probably see something about that soon. It sounds like a small like side project that Hasbro won't bother promoting on its streams. So we'll see. Uh, we'll probably have to wait for some leaker to get their hands on it in order to find out about it. I hate that, but yeah, that's how it's going to go. Let's move on. We have a street date for Transformers 1, the next Transformers movie, the fully animated movie that takes place on Cybertron before the war begins. We have August 1st, 2024 as the release date for the toy line, which is just a month ahead of the September launch of the movie itself. Makes sense. That's when the movie, that's when the toys are supposed to come out about a month before the movie begins. Uh, so the shelves can be nice and saturated by the time the movie drops and everybody wants something from the movie. Uh, we also have something called Prime Changers, which is a toy listed at $59.99. It's, now, keep in mind, this is an overseas listing, so that price is not, uh, not tech, potentially not uh, representative of something that's going to be coming out in the U.S., uh, sounds at least like it might be a big-ish figure regardless, though. So we're thinking leader class or probably something more akin to the gimmicky figures they've been doing for the movies. Um, we'll see. We'll see. The fact that it's called Prime Changers makes me think that it's more than just Optimus. That they've got someone else cooked here. So we might have more... Keep in mind, this is like pre-war. It's like Cybertron just before Optimus and Megatron became enemies. We might be dealing with more than one Prime to fill out a whole wave of assortment curious curious now how about we talk about some things we can actually physically see okay another beast wars two-pack from takara is on the way people have now have rat trap and pterosaur in hand pterosaur being fairly annoying to get unless you were willing to settle for the toy accurate version that came out at target that one was pretty easy to grab if you missed out or if you want something more show accurate, this was the one to wait for. So let's see how they turned out, shall we? They come with the old school cards with the old school renders on the on the front. I mean, it looks really, really nice. Uh, Pterosaur looks good. I mean, all the versions of this mold have looked good. Like, you know, just aside from, you know, he's a pretty thick pteranodon. But, you know, color-wise, everything looks pretty spot on. Uh, Rat Trap looking good. They've painted whiskers on him. Which I'm not sure I agree with. That looks super weird. I'm not... I don't think I'm a fan of that. Uh, but it looks like they tried to be a little bit more in-depth with the paint job. They left his toes unpainted to make his little claws stand out. Okay, I guess that's fine. They've airbrushed the front a little bit. Uh... Why did you give him fire breath? It's funny, but okay. Uh, robot mode looks good. I mean, it's a core class, so you know there's only so much they can do to it, but it looks pretty well painted to me. Again, I'd have to dig out my Kingdom one to make a comparison just to see uh, how close this came or how different it looks. Um, this, this uh, Whoever posted these did not provide any kind of comparison shots, unfortunately. Gonna have to wait for those a little bit longer. Rat Trap looks fine, though. Good on you for recreating that scene. That's good. And then Pterosaur looks good. He's got the colors in the right spots. Uh, he's he's got a you know the the mole again. Still looks pretty good for what it is. Yeah, like it's just Pterosaur. Is <laughs> what can I say? But no, like you know this. Like I said, like these these toys, like this like premium paint job. This old school method Takara has been doing has been turning out pretty good. I have been following along. I've been collecting it. I've got three of the sets so far. Uh, they do look beautiful in hand. Um, you know, some more than others. It's just... It's just nice to see Takara being Takara again. And, like, seeing that the... the, the Jap Like, the Japanese version of these toys are getting... The paint job we used to get for all Transformers. Oh, well. So, that's to, something to look forward to. Let's look at something weird now. Earthspark drops something weird on us. We saw these before, but now we got them in package, and we've got actual in hand, so we can see everything they do. So these are Cyber Combiners. You get a two-pack of Robbie and Twitch, and then Bumblebee and Moe. Kind of weird that, you know, 
Robbie's with the Terran that he's associated with, but Mo is just with Bumblebee. But then again, I guess we have to put Bumblebee in the wave so everyone will buy it. Here's the fun part. You got all these individual action figures. You can see Robbie and Moe's faces inside those big glowy helmets. And they do have individual transformations. Yeah, I Yeah, so that's supposed to that's supposed to be Mo in there. It's not the best likeness. Though of course that could just be the helmet doing it. So aside from just yeah, they look like fairly simple figures. Nothing huge complexity in the articulation or detail. Uh, believe, yeah, um, yeah, uh, Twitch's face looks just a little off there. Just a little off. Uh, yeah, so Robbie and Moe don't transform. They're just the figures, but Twitch and Bumblebee obviously transform. And then they do this. We have new figures that can actually do Energon power linking. And it looks like it operates exactly the same. Those are very familiar looking kind of ports. And sockets that is a very familiar combination set this is getting like old school <laughs> this is getting kind of cool now they are kind of awkward in that um, you know it's really just like flip the arms back and duck the head down they like twitch and bumblebee both basically operate like energon hotshot who admittedly is probably the one of the worst of those but it looks like the proportions balance out well enough. So that's okay. This is the shot I wanted to see. Yes, the siblings can actually combine. So that is a, that's a thing. And I almost suspect we would see that at some point in the show, honestly. And then Twitch and Bumblebee can also combine. And they do have upgraded heads when they are the, the top section. So that's cool. That's an actually a plus over the Energon version. Yeah, that's actually a really cool function that they can that they work that way. And it looks like the articulation's better than a lot of those tended to be. This is the return. This is the return. So power linking in Energon is one of my favorite gimmicks because the more of these you collected, the more you could do and the more combinations you had. It was a really fun one to collect and see everything you could do. So honestly, yeah, if this is an Earthspark line that's going to continue... You know, if I can get, you know, Hashtag and Thrash and everybody else in this style, I would be all for this. I would be all for this taking off and being something we get plenty more of. And they're pretty big, too. Like, look at that. Once combined, they're bigger than a Voyager. And the, the Reactivate Voyagers have actually been pretty big. I'm really impressed. I'm, like, really looking forward to these guys now. Enough gushing over that. Enough gushing over that. Let's gush over this. Ooh, we have a brand new Shockwave toy on the way. It's the Bumblebee movie version in Voyager class form. Looking fantastic. Now, granted, there's not a whole lot to get wrong about him. We've already kind of decided how his vehicle mode is going to look. Uh, the robot mode, of course, is patterned directly off the model from the movie. The only switch up, I think, is those like childbirthing hips that they've kind of featured have been reduced so the proportions look a lot nicer. But look at him. Look at that. His size is comparable to like a prime Voyager, which is bigger than the Voyagers we have now. He's beefy. He's big. Oh, he looks so cool. Yeah, I'm real. I really like how this is done. Look at the size comparisons. Look at the size comparisons. He is just, he is a beefy tank. I'm really curious. I think it's just going to be down to simplicity because this vehicle mode really doesn't seem like it's doing a terrible amount. It doesn't have to, though. Uh, so it looks like we're getting a big Voyager by way of simple engineering, which, you know, once in a while, I'm perfectly happy about. It just looks cool. Off, oh, you've got the Bumblebee movie Decepticons. Like this is gonna be such a cool piece in the collection. Uh, and my buddy John, who did the voice in the movie, great to see he's got a, another toy. He gets to say is him. Really, really cool. Looking forward to it. All right, new 40th anniversary blaster is dropping. Uh, so this is another in the Walmart vintage retro reissue, whatever they're calling the line now. Uh, and it's done up in the same style. 
So you see the G1 blaster on the left, the new version on the right. We've omitted stickers and we've gone completely with Tampa graphs to make it more cartoon accurate. You can see he doesn't have that beige color to the plastic. He is solid silver in the legs and the handle. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we still have a translucent window in the chest, but we have actually decoed over it to give it more of the look he had in the cartoon. Uh, the blaster, the actual blaster he comes with, and a few extra parts are done up in gray instead of black, so we're getting a little bit more accurate there. Even Steeljaw is completely tampographed, which honestly kind of makes the tape ugly, but in Steeljaw mode, he looks fine. Though, is his eye painted? It's hard to tell. Focus camera, please focus. Please focus. You can also see the chrome has been removed and uh, replaced with some matte uh, gold paint. Uh, the, the die cast in his legs has also been painted over in gray to give it all a flat cartoon look. Yeah, the downside to a blaster toy is you're never going to get it quite right. It's always going to look weird because the head just is not designed to look like it did in the show. That's Sunbow's problem, not the toys. They did paint the when they did paint the eyes blue though, so it definitely has a different look than the original toy. It stands out a little bit more and it is, feels a little bit closer. I'm not huge on the figure. I'm I've never been huge on G1 Blaster, so I don't know if I'm gonna grab this. I just noticed the the turn the dial on his chest is also painted. Uh, but I do still love the idea of like taking G1 molds and repainting them in the style because I think it's interesting. I think it's an interesting thing to finally do. So, if you're out there collecting those, one more to collect. If you're collecting bigger stuff, this one might catch you. Three Zeros dropping a Year of the Dragon Optimus Prime based on their MDLX version of the mold. And it is looking really, really nice. I mean, it's just a solid gold Optimus Prime, so of course it looks nice. What I love about this is that it's two-tone gold. There's multiple shades of gold going on here, like kind of flat rose gold and then like proper gold. And it looks a lot nicer. Like the, like it's not just a strict gold repaint. There's actual deco and detail to it and parts still stand out from each other. Um, also, he has some like, like a dragon tattooing across him. Like he's out of an old Yakuza game. <laughs> uh, I guess that's just how they work the dragon into one of their releases. It's a definitely a weird take on Optimus Prime, but I mean the deco alone is pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie, pretty nice. I am not gonna lie. So, if you want your higher end Optimus Primes and you like your gold shiny, there's plenty to enjoy about this one. All right, so let's take a look at uh, our friends over at Yolo Park. They have dropped some preview samples and pre-orders for their brand new. Uh, op, their brand new AMK Mini G1 line, which is snap together figures. They come disassembled. You put them together, and they are really nice looking mini renditions of a lot of the main characters from G1. You can see the Decepticon, Soundwave, and Starscream really well rendered. Look at the Megatron. And they, they're really, the Megatrons they do are really nice looking. Grimlock in T-Rex mode too, which I think is a fun, always a fun choice when they go that route. So I'm going to tell you guys, um, these just went up for pre-order, but don't pre-order them just yet. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Why did I put it back? Why did I put it back? So guess what? I have them in hand. I have these guys in hand. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review of them next week. I've got all six from the wave. So thanks to Yolo Park, we're going to take a look at those. And if you wait till then, I will have a link where you can pre-order these for yourself with a bit of a discount on top of the fact that these are already probably pretty affordable for what they are. So stay tuned. Next week, we'll be talk taking a deep dive into how those turned out. Until then, you can just gawk at these pictures and how nice a lot of these sculpts are for their size. So, you go take a look at those photos. We're going to continue with the news roundup and get some of the weird stuff out of the way just to finish off the episode. Transport to Oblivion's original studio sessions, or at least part one, have now been posted by Serial Geek TV over on YouTube. These are super cool because you get to hear a lot of lines that didn't make it to the show. You get to hear bloopers. You get to hear the raw audio as it's performed, alternate takes. 
This is stuff that should not exist, but it does, and I love that it exists because it lets us get so many little nuggets out of the old recordings and out of G1 that we never knew before. And it's super cool that they are being made available, so shout out to Serial Geek TV. Uh, it's a great, great thing to be able to uh, give to the fandom. Do you need a calendar? Because over at Dollar Tree, you can get a Transformers calendar right now. It's a 16-month calendar, which means it's going to last you just a little bit over a month. So you don't have to throw it out right away. It does feature quite a bit of pastel Autobot and Decepticon imagery. Some weird allusions to the old Obama Hope picture that is kind of weird to reference in 2024, but okay. Um, it's not very big. <laughs> See, to me, a calendar, like the important thing on a calendar is being able to write down, like I, like I just use, you know, my phone for a calendar these days, but uh, if I have like a paper calendar, the point is like, here's an important date, I'm going to mark it down here, here's a birthday, here's an appointment, etc, etc. I need space to write that stuff, which is not going to happen in a calendar this big. But hey, it costs less than $1.50, so what do I expect? And to wrap it up. If you want to build another Optimus Prime, but you want to do it in as many pieces as possible, there is a licensed 3D puzzle of Optimus Prime that you can now purchase. 150 uh, pieces to build your own little Optimus Prime out of what I... If they're made the way the last time I had a 3D puzzle, little foam pieces. So if you want a little foam Optimus Prime, uh, <laughs> there you go. That's available as well. And that is going to do it for our news roundup. Considering it's Christmas time, I thought a lot of news would stop dropping. A lot of things would be kind of quiet. Everyone could just kind of enjoy all their new toys and games. But no, apparently, no. We had a busy news week. So there you go. You are now caught up for the week. I will see you next week for another news roundup, as always, back on our usual Monday day. And until then, yeah, we're back to the usual daily video grind. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. We parlay with the captain. You think a werecroc is going to listen to uh, elvish rules of piracy? Of course it would be Got the freaking it. elves cool. that, that invented parlay. I had to think of a quick replacement for the French. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs>